welcome to the For Fun of Knit podcast. My name is Linda and I'm coming to you from South Surrey, just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada in the Fraser Valley. Anyway, for those of you that this is your first time checking out my channel, thank you for giving it a shot. This is a podcast where I share everything about my fiber frolicking adventures and misadventures, mostly knitting, but I do a little bit of crochet and I do a little bit of spinning now. Um, but predominantly a knitting podcast. And for those of you that are returning, welcome. I'm so happy that uh, I'm able to spend this time with you and hopefully I'm keeping you company while you craft. So today's episode is going to be a little bit different uh, because I want to share with you the adventure of Flock. At least a little snippet of it. So I'm going to start with probably about 20 minutes or so talking about flock and I'm going to overlay the video and the photos uh, as I'm speaking about it and then I will show you all the goodies or maybe I'll do that kind of on and off on and off and then I would like to give you just an update of where I am with some of my whips. Now for those of you that uh, did not see the last podcast I shared all of my whips, 99.999%. There might be one or two lurking somewhere, but <laughs> I shared all of my whips. So that was in, I think, episode 56. This is episode 57. So if you want to check out uh, all the whips that I have, uh, by all means, check that episode out. This episode, I'm just going to give you an update because those of you who know me know that I am not a monogamous knitter. Nope, I am the antithesis of that. I like to have whatever project strikes my fancy uh, readily available to work on and I get distracted a lot. Call me a magpie, squirrel, uh, whatever. <laughs> if it's something that appeals to me, I will cast it on. And most of what I cast on, I get from inspiration from you and the ladies that I knit with every Monday afternoon. So that's one of the things I love about podcasts is just the variety of projects, the variety of yarns, colors, textures, all of it is great in my mind and therefore I knit. One of the podcasts that I love watching is Danish Musings, huge podcast. You probably all know um, Hala from um, Danish Musings. I hope I pronounced that correctly. But she said uh, that she likes, what did she say? I'm just going to quote her. I'll have to, I just want to quote her because she lets her knitting delight her, I think was the words that she used. So let me just take a look. Um, she said, I let, I let myself be delighted with my knitting. And this was specifically in reference to People asking her why does she knit so many sweaters and does she need another sweater or hat or shawl? <laughs> so I think we all know we probably might not need another sweater uh, or a shawl or a pair of socks because I love socks but I let myself be delighted by the craft and I just thought that just nailed it for me anyway. So I want to give you a little bit of an update on where I am with my whips. So that is where we will start. So let's first start with flock. And I would put, I will put timestamps on the bottom. So if you don't want to hear flock, don't want to see the acquisitions, you can skip forward to the whips. And if that's not your thing, we'll catch me in episode 58 because it will be another standard, uh, wonderful uh, episode all about nitty goodness. So without further ado, flock. This is last year's flock mug, and I don't know if you can actually see the writing on the mug. It says flock, and on the back of my mug, ow, 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 which is hot, full of hot coffee with a little bit of whipping cream. Um, and the three little lambs. Look at this. I love this mug. Let me take one sip. Yum, because it matches last year's flock bag. So that mug and this bag are from 2023. So 
my girlfriends and I, we have six wonderful, amazing, we're all to told, six, including myself. So there's five other ladies that are just amazing. And we have become fast, furious friends over knitting. And we meet every Monday afternoon. That was the biggest gift, gift and consequence, wonderful, uh, amazing consequence of doing this podcast. I acquired knitting peeps, so live ones. I love all my virtual knitting peeps, but I acquired some live ones, so I'm very happy about that. And we have just hit it off like a house on fire. And so four of us, two thirds of us, were able to go to Flock this year. A third not, but two thirds yes. And so the four of us went and we had the greatest travel agent ever. That would be one of our knitting companions, Jackie, <laughs> our knitting buds, Jackie. Jackie, you were awesome. And uh, we were able to, so Jackie uh, secured us rooms at the Camlin Hotel. So for those of you that are not familiar with Flock, Flock is held in Seattle, and this was the second year in a row. Uh, so last year was the first year. This is the second year. We went both years. This year, we decided to go for a few extra days. So rather than just hit the weekend for the festival, we actually drove into Seattle, which is about two hours away from us. Um, we drove in on Thursday night. We had activities on Friday. We did Flock Saturday, Sunday, and then we had an activity Monday morning and we drove home on Monday. So Thursday, absolutely fabulous. I drove, my knitting ladies knit, but what was so fun is I gave the ladies a little um, knitting survival kit or f flock festival survival kit that had different little things in it just to sort of make, make the journey a little bit fun. And Jackie also gave us a little bit of a kit which included hand dyed yarn specific to each of us, which I thought was lovely. And this one is called the Linda colorway. <laughs> so there you go. Jackie nailed it. All my pinks, lovely. And those wonderful woolen dryer balls, which is amazing. She must be psychic because mine are starting to fluff. And so I needed new ones. So this was perfect. So yeah, so we started off in grand style for our drive down. And then uh, Thursday night we went for a nice dinner, just sat on an outdoor cafe and we were literally their last customers. They were closing. So they basically took our order, took our, you know, gave us a glass of wine, put our meals on the table and then they were shutting off all the lights. <laughs> so it was, a, we just hit it at the right moment. It was lovely. Then Friday, so much fun on Friday. Friday we decided to go to Bainbridge Island. And Jackie saw on Instagram that one of the staff members of, I always get this wrong, Le, Le Mercerie, I hope that's the way you pronounce it, which is the one of the yarn stores on Bainbridge Island, um, I do believe her name was Jennifer, had posted an Instagram saying, hey, I am going to be on the Seattle side of the ferry to Bainbridge Island on Friday at 10 o'clock in the morning if anybody would like to knit together on the boat and I can walk you to the store. So we thought that was a great idea. So we did that. We went down to the ferry and there she was. And there was about 20 other people as well, other knitters as well. And so we all had a chit chat and sat in the group and you know, sort of dispersed ourselves into the chairs and in the sun had a bit of a knit. We thought the ferry ride would be 15 minutes. It was 40. <laughs> so perfect time to chill. Beautiful scenery. I've got a few pictures of Bainbridge Island, um, which I'm showing here, I guess, as I'm speaking. We get off. It is Bainbridge Island is this beautiful island uh, where we landed was kind of the main ferry terminal with a main shopping street, I guess you would call it. Um, on one end was the yarn store La Mercerie and on the other side was Lamb and Kids. So you could walk up and down and hit both yarn stores. But it was full of furniture shops and like boutiques and you know blown glass and all sorts of artisan type of boutiques, which was just lovely. 
and we did stop at both stores, but the most damage I did was at Lamb and Kid. So at Lamb and Kid, before we left, actually, I'll back up. I actually made a list. Who am I? I actually set goals for Flock because I wanted to make sure that I was buying very intentionally and not just buying everything under the sun. So my goals were to buy yarn for the Snow Wonder by Heidi Kiermaier, to buy a skein of yarn for Patrick's sweater because the neck needs to be lined and I wanted it to be really nice yarn. I wanted to buy a colorway that was specific to the festival and I wanted to buy another mug because I love my first flock mug so much. So we go to Bainbridge Island, go to Lamb and Kid, what a beautiful store. Absolutely. It's all lamb and kid yarn with a little bit of spin cycle. I think there might've been one other brand. I can't remember, but predominantly it was lamb and kid branded yarn with a variety, a, a very unique variety of yarn fiber mixes, which was fun. I was looking specifically for the snow wonder by Heidi Kiermaier, which I'll show a picture. In particular, I love the color, that ice, ice blue. And I was also looking for a blend that would work well both here in Vancouver when it gets quite cold in the winter time, or in Spain when, you know, it can be warm in the daytime, but can get to about 10 degrees Celsius at night. So what did I find? And I'm going to have to put my glasses on for this because I won't be able to read the label, but here you go. I found this beautiful yarn. Look at this color. It is exactly the ice blue I was looking for. And it is um, Lamb and Kid Cottage Worsted. It is 50% merino, 20% linen, 15% silk, and 15% cotton. You get 280 yards per 100 grams, and it is just lovely. It's a little bit heathered. And I thought for the snow wonder, that is the ice blue that I was looking for. So I bought enough yarn for this, uh, for that sweater. So yay. And then I'm thinking, okay, well that was one flock purchase and flocks tomorrow. <laughs> Haven't even been to flock yet. The next piece of the next yarn that I bought was again for Patrick for his sweater. And it is this, this is Lamb and Kid. Look at the, look at the shine on that. Oh, it's lovely. This is Lamb and Kid Trio DK. And this is 70% Merino, 20% Cashmere, 10% Nylon. And this is just super, super luxurious. Oh, it's lovely. And it's in the color Thunder. Oh, I forgot to say, this was in the color, what is the color of this? high water this is high water this is thunder so absolutely gorgeous so there you go two of my goals done <laughs> haven't even haven't even made it to flock yet so then so we spent oh i don't know uh four four or five hours um on bainbridge island then we took the ferry back we walked that whole four days we walked everywhere my Fitbit was smoking. We walked up and down. Seattle's a very walkable city. And our hotel, the Camlin, amazing, amazing, was in the center of Seattle. Well, my version of the center of Seattle. And right across the street from the Summit Convention Center where Flock was being held. So, yay. <laughs> We didn't even have to take any, you know, transportation. We didn't have to. We walked across the street. It was crazy good. Then we went back to the cloud room where we, <laughs> where uh, the ninth floor, it was 11, the 11th floor of the hotel actually is this elongated room that has a, a seating area on one side and a seating area on the other side that includes a sofa and some comfy chairs so that you can lounge. And we occupied one section of that for the entire four days. That was our go-to knit place. So we would meet up and we would just knit there. So that was fabulous. So Saturday was 
flock. That's when we start. There were classes that you could take on the Friday. We did not take any. We did want to take one that was all about sweater fitting that we thought all of us could benefit from. <laughs> um, but it was a little bit too pricey. The Canadian dollar is not strong right now, so it was a little bit too pricey for us to, to really justify. Not that it was not worth it, it was, but for us, the exchange rate is not good right now. So we opted just to go to the festival for the yarn. And okay, the Summit Convention Center. Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful venue. Uh, you walk in, uh, first of all, it's a very modern space. You walk into this huge, massive lobby. It's quite dark inside, very moody. Uh, it's got very nice high ceilings that have all this carved wood tiling with lights above the, the wood streaming through all the way. There's a cafe. You walk in and you go to your right and there's this big massive uh, entrance to the convention center which is all tiled and so they had the wickets for the ticket sales or the admittance right at the back wall. You go through there and I'm showing video as I talk about it. You go up the escalators and the actual flock venue was on the second floor. I think classes were being held on the third floor. So you just go up the escalators, you walk in the doors, and then you are in the actual conference or convention room. It was massive. On the right-hand side when you walk in were all the tables. There was a stage area. There was some coffee and donuts and pretzels kind of a place. Uh, in the middle or right at the doors when you enter were the merchandising um, wicket or booths, I guess, as well as the yarn winding. And then when you move off to your left, you start getting into all the actual um, booths for all the wonderful, wonderful um, notions, yarns, accessories, bags, everything you could possibly think of, fiber, it was amazing. First of all, there was a ton of people there, but you would not know that. You did not feel like there was a ton of people, even though there was a ton of people. There was a huge amount of people. Um, but at no point did you feel crushed. If you needed to step away to get some space, tons of it. Uh, you, at no point did you actually have to fight to get into. I mean, some of the booths, absolutely, they were crowded, but you just waited, you know, go look at another booth, come back, and there would have been space. So I have to say the organizers, and I do believe it's Jess from La, Mer La Mercerie, I can never say that, Mercerie um, Yarn Store, she's the organizer of it. And Jess, you know, you're not going to watch my video, but I just have to say best organized uh, fiber event ever. It was spectacular. It was beautiful. It was comfortable. It showcased all the yarn so beautifully because of the light. So the vendors had to be happy, I would think. If I, if you weren't, please correct me. I'm terribly sorry, but I, it just seemed to me that it was just a, a wonderful space. So enough about the venue. On to the yarny goodness. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go back and talk about, okay, so this was 2023's flock bag. And because of this, well, well, not because of this, but what I also wanted to do was get the flock mug. Now the flock mug, this was 2023. Sorry, it's got coffee and whipping cream in it. Yes, I'm having whipping cream in my coffee. That's my little treat. Um, I hightailed it because one of my goals was to get a mug was it's called Jam PDX. Jam PDX or J-A-M PDX, but I call it Jam PDX Pottery. And they absolutely, if you can see that, uh, had fabulous pottery and it wasn't just this they had some fun stuff but they also have the flock mug now going back to the bag sorry I have to go back to this I did not buy this for 2024 and I had serious serious regret why because this was the logo look how cute is this logo can you imagine these sheep on this bag very similar bag this year but look at these sheep Oh my God, they're so cute. And they come in tangerine and lemon and mocha and cream and just so cute. They look like little Jacobs, little Jacob sheep. Anyway, I love this logo. So 
I was thrilled when the mug for 2024 was those little sheep. Look at them. Look at them. They're so cute. And they're in those colors, the tangerine, the lemon, the cream, a black and white one, the little Jacobs. I love it. I love these mugs. So this is a tradition now. I have to have one every year I go. But not only did it start there. So here you have the mug and the logo. The bag had the logo. It didn't stop there. Here's where I went a little bit overboard. So Pacific Knit Co., which you might know uh, as, as that company always has the doodle decks, you know, all the color, stranded color work um, designs in a deck for a card deck format. So the doodle decks. So the Pacific Knit Co. Um, partnered, that booth was partnering with Fangirl Knits. And so Pacific Knit Co. made one of those sheep, one of these sheep as a doodle deck. And um, Fangirl Fibers came up with a cowl kit in exactly those colors of the sheep. So this is from Fangirl Fibers and I'll try and put a picture up here of the cowl that they designed. Um, I don't have a good picture of it. It's, it's a marketing picture, so I apologize for that. But I saw this compared to the logo, the exact colors with my mug. Can you see me sitting there? With my mug, with my cowl. Now I need the bag, but there were no more. Lucky for me, now they also, before I go there, Fangirl also had this in a sock set. I picked it up, I bought it without looking. As I'm walking away from the booth, I realized I didn't pick up the sock set. I picked up a DK something set in the same colors uh, and they were sold out of the sock set. So I returned the DK set, but I kept the cowl because I'm definitely gonna make this and I cannot wait. I think it's absolutely spectacular. And now the best news is that Flock has decided, so Jess has decided to um, do a second run of all the merchandising stuff. So right now, I'm sure up until I think August 31st, you can actually buy Flock merch. So if you want one of those totes or a t-shirt or something, you can pre-order it and it'll be ready sometime in September or October or something. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, apologies. So I ordered, absolutely ordered one of the bags. So I'll be able to have my coffee in with my cowl, with my big knitting, <laughs> my knitting tote, and I'll be all matchy matchy. So I was totally thrilled. This was an unplanned purchase. So Saturday continues. Also on my wish list was to buy a colorway from Flock. And, and so there were a couple, there was one, well, there was several, I think there were several and one of them was a black and something with all the different color speckles in it. And it sold out within an hour or two hours, I guess we didn't even get to see it really. The one I saw, um, actually it was picked out by one of our ladies was botanical yarns. And this, I'm going to need my glasses. Where are my glasses? So this is botanical yarn. So this again is amazing how this works out. This is botanical yarn. There's no base to this. It's just a four ply superwash base, 75% merino, 10% or 25% nylon in their Flock Fiberfest 2024 colorway. And this is the matching non superwash mohair lace. It's their brush singles base and it is 50 grams and you get 420 meters. 425, 400. Now look at these colors though. These colors are the tangerine and there's cafe latte. There's a little bit more pink in here, but these are so similar to the colors in, look at that, look at that. I thought they did a fabulous job of matching that. So these, I love buying um, a colorway that really speaks to the festival. And I keep that sort of as a commemorative. I might knit with it at some point, but for now it is just going to be a memento 
and a memory for me. So I love that. Anyway, that was one of them. The next colorway was from Miss Babs. So Miss Babs was there. So that was a first for us. And this colorway was just, um, we chose her Yowza base which is her Yauza DK. And this was just Fiber, Flock Fiber Festival 2024. Look at this. Now, Miss Babs did not follow, obviously, you can only do so many renditions of this. But so was this an actual flock colorway? Probably not, but it was the colorway that Miss Babs was highlighting for the festival. So that's lovely. I just love all those blues and purples. So there was that. What else? So then I did have as a goal was to purchase some fiber because of the spinning that I haven't done in a week and so I have to get back on it because I don't want to lose my spinning mojo. But I wanted to have a fiber that was a different breed. And this was absolutely stunning. This is the Skagit woolen roving from the Skagit Woolen Works from Skagit Woolen Works and this is Romney silk it, so I bought three hanks or skeins I don't know what they are when they're still roving three bats of roving but look at this this is Romney silk in a natural and I think it's called silver swirl and this might be slightly dyed. I didn't think it was, but it might be because it's called Silver Swirl. But I do believe it was a natural. Yep, nope, this is a natural. Yep, natural. I do believe it's a natural colorway. But it is a beautiful silvery gray. And I want to spin this for one specific project. I don't, I'm not a very good spinner. I don't even know how much I'll get out of two ounces. So we'll, we'll have to see. But that was another purchase. So the final purchase, oops, sorry about that. The final purchase on Saturday was, again, an unplanned purchase. So here I had this list, most of which I covered off at Lamb and Kid before I even got to Flock. <laughs> oops. Um, which is always the danger because then you get attracted to something completely different and before you know it, you end up with something from Les Garçons. So, look at this bag. Is this not cute? Les Garçons is the yarn dye uh, business from uh, Max and Vincent. Vincent is the main dyer. Max is the designer, the sweater designer, knitwear designer, and he's a graphic artist. He is published, he's got cartoons, books, all sorts of things with his illustrations. He's an illustrator. And if you bought three skeins or more, you ended up with this bag. So, didn't know that. Thank you, Noreen, <laughs> for reminding Vincent to give me the bag. <laughs> but this bag came, was getting, I got it because I bought four skeins of, look at this, look at this, Les Garçons, oh look at this, this is their British wool, their British sport wool, is that what it's called? Can't see, no glasses. It's called their British sport, it is called their British sport. It is 70% BFL, 30% Masham. And the colorway, it is true. What you are seeing on the camera is the colorway. It is this deep forest jewel. It's jewelly. Um, look at that. It's called Chris's Pine Green from, I do believe, Chris Pine as Captain Kirk. So there you go. Kind of a play on words there, guys. But, oh my gosh, I love this color. So, why did I buy this? I had a theory, I had a whole bunch of excuses in my head as to why I bought this. So here you go. And you can believe me or not, but here you go. For those of you that know me, you know that I've been working on Patrick's sweater for going on three years now. 
yeah, three years. I'm going to finish it this year. If it doesn't fit him, I am not, oh, I'll be, I will be disappointed, but I'm going to keep my cool and I'm going to immediately cast on another sweater, a pattern of my choice, a modern pattern, not from 1970 something, um, that I know I can knit to fit him. And this is a sport weight yarn, so it would be just a nice bougie sweatshirty sweater that's not too hot uh, for him to lounge around in. It's going to be nice, so he could go out in it if he wanted to, but my intention for him is just to have something. It's a little chilled, it's a little drafty, because hey, if we go to Ireland, that's what's going to happen. A little drafty, he can pull it on a sweater. And green is a beautiful color on him. It is not black or gray. If the sweater that I knit him is, does work and is a perfect fit, I'm going to cast him on another sweater anyway. And the big thing either way is I'm not going to tell him. He's never going to know until the freaking sweater is finished. <laughs> and then if he doesn't like the finished sweater, then it's just going to be a sweater for me. It'll be the boyfriend sweater for me because I love this color. So there you go. So that was that. And the last purchase that I made was just this um, Skagit. And where was this? This is from Wool & Co. Just their Skagit Rosemary Lanolin Hand Balm. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. And what I love about it is it doesn't have too much fragrance. It just has a little bit of fragrance. So you're not perfuming yourself or you're knitting when you're using it, but that's from Wool & Co. I just had to, I've got some other ones from them and I just absolutely love it. It's rosemary. Oh, that smells so, 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 so good. So that is it for the purchases as it pertains to flock. And I know before I sign off on the flock, I'm, I keep thinking there's something, oh, I know, yikes, so glad. <laughs> I don't have any kind of a memory. So one of the things I absolutely wanted to highlight was how wonderful it was to meet some of, of my, my virtual knitting friends. So, for those of you, most of you I've never met. And so when I do get to meet one of you face to face, it is really, really my privilege, my honor. It is so much fun to meet you, put a face to a name, and just to know that I am actually keeping you company while you knit. I hope you get a chuckle out of half of what I do. And uh, I, I'm just so thrilled that I had that opportunity to meet you. So I just wanna highlight a few people that I actually met uh, I need my glasses. Let me take a look. So I met, okay, I met Anne, Anne Green from California. Hi, Anne. Along with her friends Claudette. Hello, Claudette. <laughs> Claudette, you were the only other person wearing a cavat. The four of us wore cavats for the day one. I forgot to mention that. Um, and so that was kind of a highlight of the show. Lots of people stopped us. So that was kind of fun and asked about our knits because they were very four different knits. And Claudette, yours was different from ours. So you should have tagged along just and we could have been five cavats walking around. <laughs> and your friend Sophia. Hello, Sophia. I hope I have the name right. Uh, we met Mary. We also met Megan from Seattle. Hello, Megan. And Marion from just outside of Seattle. Hello, Marion. Lovely to see you. And we met Loli, her sister Susan, and your friend Jane. So the three of you were a blast. Thank you so much for stopping and saying hello. That was really, really very nice. And I was very fortunate on Bainbridge Island to see Peggy again. Hello, Peggy, um, who Peggy and I became internet uh, friends because we started a podcast at the same time. And then we decided to do a knit along, which we both failed miserably. Although, Peggy, you did finish your sweater, in fairness. I did not. <laughs> but we seem to meet uh, at Fiber Festival, so that's perfect. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you all for, you know, taking the time to just stop and say hello. That, that meant a lot. And I'm just, you know, I hope to continue just, like I said, keeping everybody company while you craft. So thank you so much. And that wraps up Flock 
for for this year <laughs> out now and just skip to the knitting you can because this is going to be a just two days of a little bit of chatter about the next two days so saturday night we ended up going to donny osmond oh my goodness because one of our ladies is a huge donny osmond fan now myself uh as children we were in and out of canada on a, you know we were out of canada more than we were in canada as a matter of fact, um, I really only came back for any significant amount of time when I was 13. So there's a whole generation of teen idols and music that I know very little about, and Donny Osmond would be one of them. I do know that he sang Puppy Love. Who doesn't know that? It wasn't, but I did not know that was not his song. I did not know that was a Paul Anka song. I thought that was a Donny Osmond song. <laughs> but anyway, he covered it. But so we went to this concert and it wasn't, it wasn't really a concert. It was his Las Vegas residency show on tour. And it was fabulous. I cannot say enough about how much I enjoyed it. I knew nothing about him. Now I, I recognize songs that he sang once he started singing them. Didn't know he had 62 albums. Holy camoly. Um, He's a rock musician, didn't know that either. So much, he was so entertaining and so authentic. Logically, intuit, like intellectually, I know that he has done this show for, I don't know, five years minimum running every night. He's on tour, he does a show every night or every other night. So that's thousands of shows and yet, it was as fresh and as real and as personal as if this was the very first time he was ever addressing an audience. And it was, it was just so real. He was so nice. He was a nice person. He was an entertaining person. His stories were hilarious. Um, I can't say enough about it. If you get a chance to see his Las Vegas residency or if he comes on tour in your area, I highly recommend you go. Even if in the back of your mind you're thinking, oh, I'm not a Donny Osmond fan. I didn't know anything about Donny Osmond. And now I totally get the appeal. Totally get the appeal. 100%. So that was Saturday night. Sunday, back to flock in the morning last rip through to make sure that there was nothing else that we should have bought that we did not buy and yes some of my peeps bought a few things <laughs> and then we walked to ivers down at the waterfront for lunch had lunch out on the deck walked back up knit for most of the um, afternoon had a very light dinner of appies and then monday we had tickets to chihuly which is a famous, 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 world-known world uh, blown glass artist and to which they ha he has his own museums. One of which is in Seattle. I think he's from Seattle, actually. Don't quote me. Um, so we took the free metro to, um, to the area. We ended up having breakfast. I think it was called Five Corners, the Five Corners Cafe, which was on... Guy Fieri's Diners, Dives, and drive throughs And it was just, a del it was a delicious breakfast. The staff are really quirky. I'm just gonna say, don't expect a smile. They were quirky, but it was a really great experience. Really good breakfast. And then we went to the museum. Stunning. I'll show you pictures in here of the museum. It was all, I mean, the color. I can't say anything more. You'll see the color when you see the photos or, or um, the, yeah, I guess I saw photos. There's, oh, there's a little bit of video. Uh, but the funny part is, you, honestly, I was like a child. Like you had, honestly, my friends had to gatekeep me because my elbows and, and my, you know, knitting bag or purse that I was carrying, it was my basket. That's what it was. I was carrying my basket with me. If I turned around too fast, I was going to knock over glass left, right, and center. So they were corralling me, making sure that I wasn't destroying the museum. So that was kind of funny. But we did that and then we actually had just a leisurely drive back to Vancouver. It was the best, best knitting weekend and the best girlfriend weekend ever. It was just a fantastic time. So that was Flock 2024 and they've already announced Flock 2025 on August 10th, 11th and 12th, I do believe. And I 
think that we are going. <laughs> so uh, we have a great place to stay. It was amazing. And so again, just to finish up with Flock, so our hotel was on one corner, the summit was on the next corner, and the Paramount Theater where Donny Osmond was playing was on the other corner. So we only had to do the crosswalk uh, across corners. We didn't have to go anywhere. It was, like I said, just fabulous. I'll stop gushing now. Flock was amazing, best yarn festival. You have gotta go next year if you get a chance. And if we get to go, hopefully we will be seeing you there. Thank you so much. So now I am going to switch gears and show you a little update on some of my whips that I talked about in the last episode. This is what this is. This is a knitting podcast or a fiber podcast. I'm channeling Jean. I'm, ch I'm channeling Barbara Eden today. There you go with the ponytail. Um. Okay. So first finished object. So I think I shared that I had 20 whips in the last episode and I'm only going to go over my progress. I'm not going to go through any works in progress in this particular episode because I think you've seen enough, excuse me, works in progress. So first and foremost, my St. Patty's Day socks. So these were started last year before St. Patty's Day. So 2023, early 2023, I was using all scraps that I had from row one minis and Christmas socks that I had knit, etc. And I do a standard toe up vanilla sock, which is 64 stitches. Um, I like trying different heels because I'm always trying to find a sock that gives me enough room in between my heel and my instep so that it's not pulling too much. This time last year, I had just learned the shadow wrap short, re short row heel from um, Denise of Earth Tones Girl. And the first pair of socks that I made were Halloween socks and I just did it as described and the heel was too small for me. It only like literally would stop right here on the sock. So very little of my heel would actually, my physical heel would be covered by the heel of the sock and I wasn't getting enough room in here. It was quite tight. So I thought, okay, with these ones, what I'll try and do is I know that it's it stops too soon for me. I'll do some short rows. I'll do some short rows back and forth to raise this up. And what that did, which I didn't really count on, was it, it definitely gave me more space in the instep um, because it wasn't pulling down across here it was only pulling across this way. So for whatever reason, I don't know the science behind it or the math behind it, but this sock fits really, really well. And then I just did a two by two ribbing and I bound off with a, just a super stretchy bind off, Jenny's super stretchy bind off. And so voila, these socks, my St. Patty's Day socks, finished object from the whip pile, number one. Number two is this lovely, lovely, lovely thing. And I just have to find the front of it. This beautiful, beautiful hat. And this is called the Tilda hat. And I will put up pitch, a picture for this. The Tilda hat. Actually, I should go over here so that the Tilda hat can go there. Um, and this is by, I do believe, Inez Sang. Inez Sang. Is it Inez? Yeah, it's either Inez or Insa. Inez Sang. And I just put a black pom-pom on it. It's one of the snap-on pom-poms. And I bought that from the bowler. Yeah, bowler pom-poms. Okay, now this is going to go on my head over my ponytail, so it's not going to fit properly. But I do just want to show you, like it does fit me perfectly. It's just my ponytail's up there, so it's a little short. But look at how pretty that is. The cabling there and a faux cable, it's just gorgeous. And this particular hat, the Tilda hat, I knit in the Fiber Co Cumbria, which is a worsted weight. 
it is, I do believe, 70% merino, 30% masham, and 20% mohair, or 30% masham and 10% mohair. That's what it is. And I paired it just with this. I bought this on Etsy, but I don't remember who from or what it's called. Labels long gone, and it is just a Surrey alpaca. So it is that is what created this beautiful hat and that has been sitting on my needles since early 2023. So yay, whip number two, long standing whip number two completed. Woohoo! <laughs> so the third whip, which was kind of a weird whip because it wasn't really a whip. I just started making granny squares and I had no idea what to do with them. I was using row one minis that I didn't want to put into my granny stripe blanket. So I had these minis left over and not because I didn't like the colors, but sometimes the colors were too repetitive. And so I made a bag. There you go. I had 13 squares. I actually had 15, so two I didn't use. But for this bag, I crocheted them together very rustically. I crocheted them together. I am going to line it at some point and I crocheted a strap. Um, I'm not too sure I like the strap and I'm never going to use this as a handbag. I think what I'm going to end up doing is just tying these off and it will be a pro project bag. I think that's probably how it will end up being a very nice project bag. But what a great use of granny squares. So now I've got these granny squares. Notice I did blues and purples on one side, pinks on the other side, and then the miscellaneous colors I used as the bottom and the sides folded in half. So there you go. That is a great project if you don't know what to do with granny squares especially i was practicing because i didn't know how to make granny squares as a matter of fact they're not all the same size so what i did is i blocked them to four and a half inches so i blocked all of them some of them didn't need blocking and other ones i had to stretch a bit yeah and one of these i can't remember which one is much bigger than the other ones i can't remember which one it is but it doesn't matter nobody will know it's now a project bag and i absolutely love it so that was that. The last finished object that was a whip is this. So this is my classic Cardi from Tin Can Knits. And what I love about this pattern, and I just want to pull it up because I want to read a few things about this pattern. Bear with me. Okay, so what I love so what I love about this pattern is you can knit it with any gauge of wool. So the pattern comes written for fingering, DK, or worsted. It ranges from newborn all the way to 6XL, which is a 70 inch bust. So super inclusive pattern, which Tin Can Knits is known for. Um, I actually knit it exactly to pattern. For the worsted weight, what I used was, now this is a sweater for my girlfriend's mom who is in a care home. And so we wanted to make it with acrylic because we weren't sure, you know, what level of laundry they would be doing. And so Jill chose Loops and Threads, which is just 100% acrylic in this really beautiful blue, happy blue, I call it happy blue. Um, colorway. Now what I will know notice which I didn't notice when I was knitting you might be able to see it from here I don't know if you can see it. It's subtle and it only shows up in certain lights but it is two colors. So it is two colors. We purchased knowing that they weren't the same dye lot but we took them out into the light and to the naked eye we could not see a difference. But when you knit it up it drives me insane. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there you can see it. You can see the line right there. Right there. See, looking at it this way, I can't, I barely can tell. 
but now I see it. So I hope that, I hope her mom's eyesight's not that great. She's 90 some odd years, so I'm hoping that her eyesight's not that great. I just have to put, I have, I'm gonna block it. I don't think acrylic's gonna grow at all. I hope it grows a little bit, because I'd like it to lengthen just a little bit. Um, but I just have to buy some buttons. So that's the last piece that I have to do. Now, the funny thing is about this pattern, a um, couple things, and I think I'm gonna take it off so I can talk to you. So a couple things that I wanted to highlight, a couple things that I wanted to highlight. Um, okay, so the way this is knit is it's top down and you have a choice. You can either start with the ribbing of the collar or you can do, um, you, or you can just start below the collar and then just pick up stitches and knit the collar afterwards. That's what I elected to do. So you start, you knit the entire body. It is just back and forth. Beautiful raglan increases. I love the way the raglan increases show. It's really nice detail all the way down. Then you, once you go to the bottom, you do your ribbing and it's nice two by two ribbing. Cast off, then you pick up for the sleeves, you knit the sleeves to whatever desired length. They have a nice decrease schedule. And then you do the two by two ribbing in the cuff. And then you go back and you do the neck ribbing and then you pick up stitches for each side. One side you do buttonholes. A couple of things that I would say, so binding off first of all binding off i wanted to have a bind off i hope you can see this that wasn't a tubular bind off this is an acrylic sweater so i didn't want to do a tubular bind off i did find a video by irena irena revo her knitting podcast and i will put a link below on how to do this this ribbing for two or cast off for two by two ribbing it works really well. You have to watch it a couple times, but she's extremely clear in how she's um, presenting the information. It's easy to follow. It just took me a couple of times to get my head around the four specific steps. So I'll link that below, but I love the way that turned out. When I got to, so I did the sleeves, then I went to do the ribbing did the ribbing, measured the sweater, and it was two inches too short. How did I miscalculate the length of the sweater? I do not know. So I undid the ribbing for the front and for the both sides. I unpicked the cast off for the ribbing at the bottom, pulled it back, knit two inches, did the ribbing again, then I couldn't find the video of the cast off and I didn't remember it. So I must have searched a whole bunch of them because you know you get that red line on YouTube that says you've watched this video before. So I thought, oh, this must be the one. And I started, started doing it. It was very, very similar. I knew it wasn't the same video, but it was very, very similar. But when I actually got about that far in, I'm going, this is not right. This does not look the same. And I'll show you a picture. Um, one of them, the, the second one, the incorrect one in my mind, it wasn't incorrect, but the one that I didn't like, in between, in between, so the actual cast off where the pearls were, it had a knot right in the middle on every one of them. I did not like that. The original ribbing that I did didn't have that. And I'll show a picture, but only had like basically two strands going across the pearl stitches um, versus this knot. And it's, it's a small little detail. It's a small little detail, but I noticed it. So I hunted and hunted and hunted and I finally found it. Thank goodness. Redid the ribbing. Redid rebound it off, redid the ribbing. It's still an inch short. What is it with acrylic? You're knitting it 
and on your needles you hold it and you measure it and it seems you lie it on the ground you measure it oh yeah i'm at the right spot then you and, and my bind off is not tight and it's not pulling anywhere but freaking heck it's now it's still an inch short i'm not doing it again i'm not doing it again so instead of having a 22 inch sweater she's having a 21 inch sweater and the sleeves did the same thing. They pulled up. They were 17 inches. Now they're only 16. I don't understand. So does acrylic get really warm when you're working with it and stretches when it's warm and then shrinks up when it's cold like plastic? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway, it is what it is. I am going to wash it. I am going to block it, even though that will do no good. And... It's a labor of love and I hope she likes it. It's not perfect. It's not perfect, but I hope she likes it. Anyway, so that is whip number four. So that was four whips, 16 to go. So just remember, I am for the month of August working through my whips as much as I can, but come September 1st, it's all about casting on what I want to cast on. So. So uh, it was never my intention to finish all of my whips, but I wanted to see how many I could get done in the month of August. So, um, yeah, I've done four in the three weeks that since I've talked to you and I have another week left of August. So I'm going to try and finish what I can in the week of August. And then I am coming back to you when my sister arrives for she's here for the first two weeks of september so somewhere in there you're gonna get a an episode with my mom my sister and myself so thank you that is all i have for today uh, a little light on the knitting perhaps but i hope you enjoyed the flock overview and the next episode will be all about knitty goodness again um, so I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me and knit or craft whatever you're working on. So whether it's morning, noon, or evening, whether it's summer, spring, fall, or winter, wherever you are, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Mm -hmm.